Hey guys, Lewis here. Um, in this video, we're going to give a quick overview of the three key tools we use to perform competition research. One being uh, Open Site Explorer from SEO Moz. The other one being Majestic, previously Majestic SEO and their Site Explorer. And then we also have the Site Explorer from Ahrefs. So first of all, just ignore the uh, the iPhone's headset I've got, I did get a nice set of wireless head headphones, but um, can't seem to make them work. So hey ho, a bit more practice needed. Okay, so we'll start off with uh, Open Site Explorer from Moz. And in the post that you're reading, you'll see I do cover these metrics in more detail, um, but briefly we'll go over them. Um, initially you have domain authority and page authority. Now the domain authority is um, a look at all of the links coming into a domain and the, the more relevant and the more um, kind of high profile, high power links that you have, the higher the domain authority will become. Um, what you'll see is some sites um, that you're actually assessing the competition for will actually have a uh, high authority, uh, but they're not necessarily trying to rank for that particular keyword. Um, that happens all the time. And I actually consider that to be kind of low competition because they're not uh, they're not trying to target that, they're not performing SEO on that, they're not optimizing their page for that search term. They are just ranking because Google has nothing else to show um, and they think this is the, the, the most relevant because that domain already has a high authority. Kind of where you'll see kind of Amazon, eBay, um, WebMD, all those kind of sites ranking for terms that they just happen to mention somewhere on the page or you know even a couple of the keywords are mentioned and not all of the search term. Uh, page authority again um, is the actual authority of that particular page you're looking at. In this case, it's the the root domain, but um, it could be you know kind of slash and then whatever whatever inner page you want to you want to look at. Uh, generally, you will be looking at inner pages that are ranking on websites. Um, the higher the domain authority and page authority, the more difficult generally uh, they will be to beat. However, they can be inflated. Um, by um, you know very various tactics, we don't need to cover that in this video. But just pay attention to that, and also check out the actual links that are coming in, and see if they're kind of generic or they're kind of the spammy links, or you know even some of these tools will show some PBN links, even though they're told not to. But uh, using HT Access, uh, we'll cover that in my uh, in my PBN post. But uh, some of them will show that and kind of ignore the. Uh, the no follow attributes that you set. Moving on, we've got a um, number of, of root domains linking to the site and then the total number of links coming from those root domains. Um, now what you will see is a big discrepancy in the number of actual root domains and backlinks that are shown in each of these three tools. Uh, Moz has kind of really slipped in my, in my overall estimation. It's probably my least favorite of all the tools. Um, the trouble is for some reason people still love kind of domain authority um, and page authority, um, which is fine. You know, people used to love page rank until that disappeared. So, you know, it's, it's just a matter of time, I think, before people stop using this and actually, hopefully, they, they do realize that it's easily inflated. Uh, um, so it's easy, easy to inflate these metrics. So um, I'll, uh, I'll flick over to my favorite tool, which is Majestic. And I I do actually have the... the uh, paid account here, uh, which would be why you get all these kind of uh, the topical trust flows. But again, looking at my own blog, um, you'll see this ridiculous number of links here, almost 17,000, whereas if we flick back to Moz, there's just 220, so a really large discrepancy there. And I think uh, the Moz index, uh, I mean, they probably strip a load out. Um, this actually looks better uh, for, for my site uh, than Majestic does. I mean, I don't do SEO on my site uh, in terms of off-page and building backlinks, but I've got 17,000 backlinks here. Now, I think there is a one page in particular, yeah, so one article I've done here has got 12, almost 13,000 backlinks, and that is my private blog network article. Um, I think someone has been trying to uh, uh, spam my site and, uh, and knock it out of the SERPs. As you can see from the, uh, the post here, uh, it's got 531 comments and 1,600 shares, so it was quite a popular post for me. 
Um, I still got questions on it and there's still a lot of great information on there. Um, but as you can see, someone's been trying to send a load of links in. There's a lot of Chinese anchor text in there, I think from last time I looked. So, um, But yeah, that shows the discrepancy in the number of backlinks and also referring domains. So here we have 130 and Moz shows 58. So huge difference. Um, the rate at which these uh, backlink crawlers actually do crawl um, differs greatly as well. I much prefer Majestic, it's more up to date. Um, I think Matthew Woodward actually did a, a case study where he compared um, Moz, Majestic and Ahrefs all together. And I think Majestic and Ahrefs were the better of the three. As you can see here, this is uh, just jumping over to Ahrefs so, you, so I can show you what I mean is 675 backlinks, so a lot lower, um, but also higher than Moz and 130 referring domains, which actually yeah, ties in exactly with Majestic, which is nice to see. Um, so when you're doing competition research, I always use Majestic, and for me, uh, it's the most trustworthy source of information. And in particular, look at the trust flow and citation flow, which you've probably seen banded around TFCF. Um, Preferably you have um, a ratio, uh, a one-to-one -one ratio. So if I had a trust flow of 21, I would preferably have a citation flow of 21. It's not always the case. And as you can see, these these artificial links have been, uh, sorry, these spammy links have been built by others and, and whatever else and the history of the domain because I bought it and I'm in the aftermarket. Um, it's probably affecting that. But again, I'm not trying to rank for any particular keywords or anything here, so I'm not too worried. Um, and if you came up against my site in the SERPs, you're trying to outrank me for whatever whatever keyword I am ranking for, then um, I mean this is quite this is fairly high. I try and look for less than 10 trust flow, less than 15 certainly from my competitors' pages. Um, but that's not to say you can't just outrank there. It's not necessarily a, a sign of whether the site will rank, but it's kind of the trust and, and the relevancy of the backlinks coming in, which kind of create this overall trust flow for the domain. What I do like uh, Majestic for as well is the anchor text page. So as you can see here, it will jump out straight away if there are any spammy kind of backlinks built. Um, here's some of the Chinese anchor text. Um, there's a lot of kind of foreign language links as well. Um, here it looks like, see, I mean they've given me great anchor text but then that's probably over optimized my page for building a private blog network which is kind of what the site, the page was ranking for in the first place. Um, and arts and photography, which is well completely irrelevant. This anchor text page can give you an understanding of the anchor text being used in the backlinks that are coming into the page. So if you do have a competitor that's building backlinks and doing off-page SEO, you can see what kind of anchor text they're using in order to rank, uh, which is perfect because you can kind of try and get the same split across your anchor text to give you the best chance of ranking. And um, last of all, we'll jump over to Ahrefs. I don't really use uh, much of this apart from the number of backlinks and referring domains. Social metrics is a good sign to see whether people are using social to kind of uh, build those signals that Google really likes at the moment. Um, you know, before you send any, say, PBN links or whatever to any of your pages, then, you know, you want to build some social signals initially because, you know, if why would a site get high-powered high powered links if it wasn't getting any social traffic or you know no people were, were actually viewing that viewing that page so that's what i like to do initially um kind of off, off topic but we'll drop that in there um again um ahrefs has uh, an anchor text feature which is also pretty cool um i mean their site seems to be running really slow today um i don't have the paid account of ahrefs i don't really i don't use it as much Although I know their backlinks, um, generally they give more backlinks and it is a good tool to use, but I'm happy with my paid Majestic account for now. And as you can see here, here's the anchor text coming into my root domain. Um, this one was one of the first posts I wrote and this one was came shortly after that. 
uh, but most of it is kind of Lewis and cloud income, which is why I rank for those kind of terms. And as I said, we'll look at the inbound links as well. I think generally you can tell from the anchor text whether it's a, a comment or not. Um, I think this was these are a couple of comments I left on Noah Kagan's site, uh, Dave Schneider, um, and John Haver there. These are generally ones where people have linked out to you. But uh, what's good is you can see obviously the the number of social shares that have happened on that particular article, and also the the relevancy and how many internal and external backlinks going to and from that page. Uh, so it's good just to check, and also you can check to see when you're looking at a competitor's site if those links still exist. Um, now my preference is to use Majestic. Um, and what I like to see is do do those pages still exist? So you would open, uh, sorry, no, do those links still exist on those pages? Um, yeah. Uh, so what you shouldn't rely on is the the link type here, and it will tell you if it's been deleted or not. You shouldn't rely on that because the index isn't always completely up to date. If what you should do is dig into some of these and open them and just double check that they do still exist. Um, I'm guessing someone actually linked to my sites. I don't think I dropped my link in there. Anyway, you, you can view the source, or maybe a discuss comment link. You can view the source of the page and find, you know, do a search for the text. So overall, what's important with these three tools is that you use them to assess the competition, try and understand how they are ranking, what backlinks they have, and as an extra step is to, if you can afford to get the pay tool from Majestic, you can actually extract all of the backlinks, which is I often do for any competition research to see what kind of backlinks they have and whether I can go out and obtain those backlinks. Um, my thought process is if you can gain the same backlinks that your competitor has and then you can add PBN links, you should win. You, I always try to beat them on on-page. Uh, my on-page is, is fairly solid. Um, content length is always, um, always higher. Um, there's tables uh, and other pieces of data, optimize alt tags for images, all that jazz. And then PBN links on top of that, you should be able to blow them out of the water, providing you pick the right keywords and you perform this analysis. And it does take time, it takes a lot of time, but it's absolutely key to keyword research that you, you do this and you do take the time because as you read in the uh, keyword research in chapter one, the first keyword I went for was how to make French toast. And uh, well, it's just crazy to think about now that I actually decided to go for that keyword. Um, but I was I was a newbie, you know, and I saw the search volume and I was jumping for joy and I thought, yeah, I can I can take that. And I did kind of, uh, you know, I hit third or fourth or something and got some decent traffic, but that was, it was worthless traffic. Um, I put, even put AdSense on and, you know, nobody clicked. They just wanted a recipe, which they got from my site and then they left. Um, so picking the right keywords, the right buyer keywords and then performing the right keyword research is is super important and I can't overemphasize that before you jump in and uh, I mean I'm not underestimating taking action here because that is the next step but before you start taking action this is the action you need to be doing this kind of nitty-gritty in the trenches sometimes it's boring um, I actually quite enjoy it so I don't mind doing it and I've, I have trained people before to do it for me and actually just reverted to doing it myself because it's it's a skill set that's really good. Um, it's difficult to acquire, but once you understand and once you've gone through so much, so many keywords, you, you truly get a feel for whether you can rank for a keyword or not and roughly how long that will take you. Um, so that was it really. Brief overview of the three tools. Hopefully you enjoyed it and you learned something new. And I will see you back in the article.